There's a huge British helicopter capable of lifting a heavy tank that's protected by armor that can deflect machine gun bullets and even rockets. It can carry an entire company of armed soldiers over 600 miles, as well as destroy submarines and ships with deep sea bombs. Believe it or not, this same helicopter is already in Ukraine. What exactly is this giant capable of when paired with an F-16 fighter jet? which is also on its way to the battlefield to prove itself in combat. Storming the enemy at supersonic speed seems to be a routine activity, and its ability to spring a surprise bombardment makes it a versatile and indispensable fighter, especially when there just isn't anything capable of fighting back. Two of these steel bees could cause tremendous panic among the enemy, but even such a powerful weapon has its drawbacks. Too little time and money was allocated to produce the F-16 due to problems with its predecessor, but it did have a lot of requirements. Meanwhile, the helicopter was given plenty of attention, but due to experimentation, the final product turned out to be too large. Plus, it had literally no electronics and relied purely on the pilot and his eyes. First and foremost, I have to tell you that the S-61 Sea King is one of the largest helicopters in the world, and also the first amphibious helicopter. It is a heavy lift helicopter. It's the largest helicopter in the military. Britain was intrigued by the opportunity to create a chopper that could not only transport infantry, but also destroy submarines. That's why Westland Helicopters came to a licensing agreement with Sikorsky Aircraft, thus allowing it to build such helicopters. But the Sikorsky invention was very poorly implemented despite the interest in creating an amphibious vehicle. Their helicopter, called SH-3 Sea King, had poorly developed avionics, it lacked most computer systems, and most importantly, didn't even have its own radar. Not having a radar may not seem like a big deal, but it turned out to be so inconvenient that most of the helicopters were simply never used. Firstly, this meant the SH-3 had to fly with other aircraft that had reconnaissance capabilities, affecting both the secrecy of the operation and fuel costs. Secondly, if there was no ally with a radar nearby, the Sea King wasn't really combat ready at all, because visually spotting a deep sea boat just wasn't realistic. Westland had to significantly upgrade the helicopter to make it truly powerful. The first thing they did was modify the entire onboard system, which allowed the helicopter to become completely autonomous when it came to flight control. It's going to be an entirely new system and need a new era of pilot to, to learn management. The second significant change was the engine. The British had the flagship Rolls-Royce Gnome engines installed on board, which could accelerate the vehicle to 130 miles per hour at full load capacity, and also cover 780 miles on a single fuel tank. That's enough to fly from Kyiv to Crimea, fly around it, and fly back after dropping a couple of enormous bombs with a one-mile kill radius. We're not worried about how much power we have to pull to make a turn or climb or descend. We've got it there at our fingertips. Designers also made sure the helicopter was well protected, endowing it with British anti-submarine defense systems, a pair of extremely rapid-fire Vulcan machine guns, and most importantly, a much-needed search radar. As a result, the Westland S-61 helicopter has become a bounty hunter capable of working alone, coordinating with other aircraft or surface vessels, and destroying ships and submarines with depth charges. This is the version of the helicopter that's standing by in Ukraine to contribute to the battle zone. No less formidable in terms of power are the F-16s that the Netherlands is preparing to send as military assistance. And this isn't the basic version of the fighter, but the latest modification that maximizes all of its positive attributes. The future enemy of the F-16 is considered to be the MiG-29, but the latter clearly loses when it comes to performance. The F-16 can fly 1,100 miles at a speed of 1,650 miles per hour. That means it can fly from Berlin to Moscow in just 40 minutes. The MiG, in turn, can reach speeds of 1,500 miles per hour, but with only a third of the flight range at just 435 miles. That's a disgraceful distance, not even enough to fly between Kyiv and Moscow. The American fighter also has a more powerful radar with a range of 155 miles versus the MiG's 50 miles. The same goes for weaponry. The MiG has six weak, unguided bombs with a maximum weight of 4,600 pounds and a narrow kill zone, while the F-16 has up to nine guided bombs on board with a total weight of 12,200 pounds 
that can destroy enemy equipment on the battlefield and turn a fortified base into dust. Some even call this plane the best in the world, and maybe it is. The history of the F-16 certainly testifies to its combat prowess. The F-16 Fighting Falcon is a lightweight multi-role fighter that is highly maneuverable in air-to-air -air combat and air-to-ground attack. The United States wanted something cheap, powerful, and feisty. Did they get it? Spoiler alert, yes, they did. The new F-16 came out exactly as it was intended, a multi-role fighter that's easy to maintain and designed to establish air superiority. It was conceived of as a, a lightweight, low-cost fighter, primarily for air-to-air, -air, but it evolved to possess air-to-air uh, -air and air-to-ground, a true multi-role fighter. It costs $8,000 per hour to fly one of these modern versions of the F-16. At the same time, the F-16 can perform almost any task in the air, from dogfights to high-precision bombing. The F-16 was a response to the cost and complexity of the F-15. The Fighting Falcon is also quite an interesting aircraft as it boasts an impressive 10 main varieties today and just as many local versions. F-16 started out as an A model and then it evolved into a C model and that was a big evolutionary change. The most modern of them is all considered to be the F-16V, which is capable of speeds of 1300 miles per hour. It's also armed with homing anti-tank shells, air-to-air -air missiles, and a high-speed aircraft machine gun. Basically, a loadout that can destroy anything, anywhere. This is the F-110 GE engine found the F-16 Flying Falcon. Russian MiG-29s can't even come close to that kind of power. There's just one specific group of MiGs that can survive an encounter with an F-16. But even these are in the hands of the Ukrainian military and fighting for justice. The F-16 was designed to withstand nine Gs, nine times the force of gravity. That's still the highest number of Gs the Air Force designs its fighters for. Of course, no matter how good a plane is, it can always be shot down, and the Avenger air defense system is the best at doing so. How fortunate that Ukraine's allies have also sent this system to provide excellent air cover for the F-16. The Avenger, or ANTWQ-1, is an American short-range anti-aircraft missile system based on the HMMWV. It was created in response to the overwhelming success of the FIM-92 Stinger, a manned portable rocket launcher that inspired the Boeing company to continue making similar developments. Surprisingly, this was probably the first and only time when everything went according to plan without any obvious problems. The vehicle turned out to be a tremendous success and fulfilled all of the military's stated goals. That is, the ability to strike airborne targets at low and medium altitudes. Perhaps innovativeness was the only problem that awaited developers, because during testing, operators were unfamiliar with firing from such a weapon since nothing like it existed. Even so, experts noted that nearly 100% of the missiles hit their target with no problem. This all speaks to one undeniable fact. This piece of military tech has been a huge success. The Avenger has two launch containers, each containing four FIM-92 Stinger missiles. These missiles have a strike range of up to 3.5 miles. Their rapid launch speed and automatic guidance system makes it possible to shoot down up to eight helicopters within a minute. For such easy targets, just one strike is enough to send a pile of red-hot metal to the landfill. With powerful weapons like the Avenger and the F-16, Ukraine's airspace will be able to stay clear of enemy encroachments while the colossal Sea Kings clear the coastline of submarines and ships. Peace is on the horizon. And with that, our video has come to an end. Thanks for watching! We'd be immensely grateful if you'd subscribe to our channel and leave a comment about what you think of our content. We'd love to read your thoughts about whether creating such a powerful aircraft was a good idea in the first place. In the meantime, I wish you all a good day. See you soon.